to go inside and talk about Find Web TV with the CEO Mark Kellett. It's going to be very exciting, very informal, so let's go in. Uh, um, thank you for taking your time to talk to me about um, Magnus Web TV. Uh, we have a few questions, so if that's okay. Yeah, sure. So I think we'll just do it off with the basics. For those who don't already know, what is Magnus Web TV? It is a very simplest term. It's a TV service, linear TV content, which means it's a RTE, TV3, channels like that. It can be viewed live at the same time you watch your traditional TV, which is maybe over a Sky or UPC service, or through where you can receive. You can watch this on any device, practically anywhere, at any time, any place. So, uh, but it's not an app in the concept of some people think about it being an app. No, you go to the website and you can watch the service there and then live. And it also integrates Facebook and Twitter as part of that experience. So it's, it is part of the new TV experience we see version of the US. Uh, we certainly see it, uh, the level of traction we've had and response to it very positive as a way forward for TV in Ireland and across Europe. Actually, um, after you launched Web TV, I actually seen a few services in America starting to do live TV. So I can see that it's definitely catching on yeah. um, live TV. Uh, so, how did the idea of Web TV service come about? Came about, uh, I would say, close to three years ago. Now, I, I've had previous experience working with people like Yahoo, and uh, there's a chap called Lloyd Braun. And Lloyd commissioned Jasper Housewives and Lost, very influential uh, TV producer. And uh, working with Lloyd, he identified that the way forward for television was very much in the online space. People consuming content, both linear, which is your traditional TV format, or a lean back format, which is a lean back with a remote control. And also about engaging with the lean forward model, which is engaging, using a social graph or some sort of user experience that to find the type of content you wanted to watch at whatever time. So you've seen that evolve with the likes of Skype by our, our own PDR functionality. Uh, that's pretty ubiquitous now at this point in time. Um, but in terms of two, three years ago, what I identified was a need in the marketplace for you know, that experience where consumers could engage with TV content at any time on any device because of the ubiquitous nature of laptops, PCs, and the emerging trend of tablets. And so that's been proven. Uh, we did launch a test version of this about two years ago. It was called MITV, Magnus Infinity Television. And we trialed it, we set a very specific trial that was over a 12 to 15 week period. And that was successful, but it was too early for the market. And so there's some, some technologies which, in an Irish context, you have to wait for the market to catch up. There's no point being what's called a pioneer, uh, that is using the business with the arrows at the back. You can launch a new product, but uh, as being the innovator at the front edge, you know, the market is not quite ready to adopt the technology. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think 2009 is quite a year because broadband speeds have catched up. Where back in 2009, broadband speeds were like under 3 megabits, right, which is totally not enough for streaming video, mm -hmm. especially live video at constant with um, latency times. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, with the launch of it since February, what was the reaction from the consumers and the reception from the reviewers and critics? The consumer reaction has been, I would say, fantastic. It's more than 100,000 people have gone to look at the site. Uh, we have about 20,000 registered users now. Uh, so 20,000 registered users in the context of what it is as a product and a service, also given its relatively limited range of channels, and we are quite honest about that. It's, you know, it's, it's traditional TV channels, content you can acquire today. But uh, what I've been fascinated by is how people use it. We are now getting support tickets from people who are watching, for example, the Magnus League match in Leicester or Munster, but they're complaining that they lost their Wi-Fi signal on the loose. So they were watching the device having been at home, yeah. Walked out with a tablet or a smartphone, sat on the Lewis, yeah. continued to watch it, and then because of maybe some coverage issues because of mobile providers, lost coverage. So, how do people consume the technology now is very interesting. In that they are watching television anywhere. And so, the you know, general consumer reaction is very positive. The business reaction has been very interesting in that people look at new business models. Uh, we've been approached from people in the US looking to use the platform to broadcast content into North America yeah. and into the UK. Uh, people looking at uh, content that they have or have access to, this is a new distribution platform for them. They no longer need to be a broadcaster with access to a satellite or a traditional distribution platform. They can access it and deliver that content anywhere in the Irish marketplace or overseas. So it is a game changer. Um, it's still early for the market, but I do believe it is, it is the way forward. And as I mentioned earlier on about the whole idea of port coding, in years to come, you will see people start to cut their connection with a traditional TV supplier and acquire their own content themselves.
Yeah, actually, what's really interesting was I'm actually using the magnet because yeah, truly, e, uh, what I've been doing is I still have an Apple TV box. Yep. So what I do is I stream it to the Apple TV box so I get my tree because I still have that channel. Yep. And I mean, it actually got to the stage where instead of getting that remote, I was just on the iPad, flip the channel and stream it up to the TV. I mean, it's so much easier. And also, what is the most popular device so far from the market research that uh, consumers are using or at businesses? It's still very much the laptop because that's the best. If you think about penetration on tablets, it's still relatively low in Irish context. So the vast majority of people are using it on, on a laptop environment. Um, but that is age, age dependent, very much an older cohort, people greater than 25 years of age, will be using a laptop. Younger than will be using a smartphone or tablet. And uh, we know that with uh, you know, people who are using it, 84% of the 18 to 25 year old age group are watching TV on a device, whether it's a tablet or a laptop, a smartphone, regularly. Of those, over a third of are using social media as part of it as well. So it's becoming an integrated experience. And so I'd say at the moment, laptop, but that's just by definition of the penetration of the device in the marketplace. As smartphones, as you know, next Christmas comes around, the new devices come around, it will move to a more tablet. I mean, you know, you look at Steve Jobs today, people we talking about the uh, iCloud, iCloud etc. I still don't understand it. Well, I think you've got to look at what's happening with it. It's a bit like the, the revolution through, or evolution through the PC yeah. through the laptop. You know, people's appetite for devices and smart devices becomes more and more uh, relevant, uh, more useful, more connected. Um, and I'd say it just becomes more mainstream is actually the main key, is tablets and smartphones become mainstream. You know, they're no longer seen as the, as the reserve of tech geeks, so to speak, it is seen as mainstream. And that's where the market is right now. So you'll see an acceleration in the adoption of those platforms moving forward. And um, going back to the, uh, the original of the web, web TV service, do you see the web TV website as a template for future services? Because, I mean, the way it's laid out, as you said, like for international distribution, mm -hmm. the way you were receiving a request from Americans, they could actually work off that template right. and just correct through their own channels. This, uh, I mean, the, the, the web TV platform, and I don't, I don't refer to it anymore as web TV, it's, it's just a TV platform. Web has connotations of it being requires some sort of technical expertise to run it. It's a straightforward TV service that happens to deliver it over the internet using IP technologies, but that's a straightforward, nothing new about it. Uh, but it does provide many new platforms. So if you're a music producer, you have, say if you're a UCD, Dublin City University students you and you have a battle of bands, there's nothing to stop you having uh, a DCU versus UCD battle of bands and having a battle of bands channel sponsored by one of the drinks companies or one of the sports companies. You can have whatever type of content you want, sort of niche content, delivered over this platform. Uh, and you can deliver it internationally if things be. So there are different ways. Uh, if you think about the Irish film board and people like that, they don't have a platform today to distribute content. Well, here's a way that they can distribute that content to a national and international audience. So it changes the way content can be accessed and monetized to move forward. The latest news for Magnum Web TV is the launch of Serview. Talk to us about the launch of Serview and Magnum Web TV. Why you decided to launch Serview? I just talk a bit generally. Well, straightforward. Serview, people use the language free. I mean, the content we have on the platform is free. Uh, we have the ability to deliver up across our platform MPEG 4 high definition streams. That is not an issue for us. What we're trying to look at is what is the service we can deliver to the consumer? demonstrate the ability of what their connectivity or their broadband can do. Uh, and ultimately the hope is we'd like people to buy the magnet service, the broadband service, which we believe is a very, very good, high-grade quality service. And uh, the point around Serview is there's a, there is an effect and obligation to push as much as free content out to the consumers as possible. We take that obligation very seriously in enabling consumers and users to get access to these new platforms. And so in the current climate where you have you know, people are finding it very, very tough economically. Can they shell out an extra 110 euro? I think the, the price I checked in uh, one of the electrical stores was 109 euro for, for a box. And you have the air and all the variable setup. What we're doing is saying you can have the service for free. We're not, we're not obliging you to buy a magnet service. We, we'd like you to experience it. And if you like it, great. But the, the appetite will always be to try and continue to add relevant content. And there has been some critique as why out Russia today, why out some of these niche channels because there is a, a population out there of not just English-speaking people, they don't just all come from Ireland. So you could look at a place where you could have some ZTV, you could have Polish TV on this free-to-air platform, which is what we have. So you know, we're happy to continue to push that, the boundary, the size of offering that we have. 
but clearly in the hope that people will look at it and experience uh, what Magnet has to offer in a broader context. RT has already got on the bandwagon with high definition video. TV3 is sometimes this year to launch high definition broadcast. When do you think Magnet Web TV will get the HD upgrade? And better yet, do you think it's ready for it? Well, the clarify, Magnus already offers high definition on its IPTV platform. So we have existing customers who can obtain a full TV service, including high def, over our IPTV service. So that's whether you're on copper or you're on fiber. Now, traditionally, well, certainly the last two, three years, we've focused on providing TV to our fiber customers. And those fiber customers, they have the ability to receive it from one gigabit of broadband connectivity. Right? So that's, that's a pretty fast service. Um, but we focus primarily on high def to those customers and the TV service to those customers with the set top box. We can provide that service to consumers over copper, um, but we've held off on pushing that just really from a quality perspective because in, in some locations the quality of that copper is pretty poor. Uh, but take it to the, uh, the web TV experience, that is not an issue. Uh, so the ex- expectation is that we will have an HD and a standard definition offering in due course. So nothing to stop us offering high definition today, uh, apart from we're trying to ensure that the maximum number of people can obtain access to a standard definition services as, as we can, and then in due course review the, the business case for high definition offerings. But the high definition is, is entirely capable, we do it today, so it's really a case of uh, a decision for ourselves based on consumer's appetite to provide more HD content over our infrastructure. So basically say, we're ready, we're just going to wait for the consumer's to catch right. So, other than that, will we see any new features coming to Magnet? There's been some chatter recently about uh, being able to record a particular part of a program on a channel at a certain time and then being able to download that and put it to iTunes or whatever. Well, Do you see anything like that? Yeah, I think one of the things I'd like to see is more of a network based DVR. I mean, the idea is a bit like in the, the PlayStation world, the gaming world, is if I walk out, if I'm playing, playing a game on, a, on a, one device, um, I should be able to walk out of the house and continue playing that same game, pause it and play it on a, maybe it's a smartphone or whatever the device may be, and that device and game will tune to the relevant bandwidth available. So whether it looks at the graphics issues, but it renders the appropriate so you can continue doing that, playing the game. Same way with the TV content. If I'm watching a program and one, I can walk out to do a view. So it's how can we improve that functionality, adding more VOD capability. Uh, and looking at some other features like um, more user social oriented content. Social, I mean, if I look at somebody's social graph, it is using that social graph to drive content. What content would suit you, the particular person, based on your, your particular graph? And offering that up as a different type of platform as well. So you have both what's called the lean back model of TV and more of the lean forward. You engage with the TV, engage with the content. And, and less of language about TV, you're engaging with content. Because the word language of TV will disappear. The word TV is content. The yeah. television is a device to deliver the content okay. over. And so I think you see that at the end of the word t- television, it's I want to consume content on a device. So what you will see is an emergence of the social media feature sets and also the content will develop over time. So basically what you're saying, very focusing on the static device point of view, you're trying to make it easier to transition from device to device. So just say you're on the PC at home and then you get your iPhone, go out and you'll be able to watch it. Yeah, correct. I mean, if you, in the same way, if you want to pause the game, you should be able to pause content and it becomes a network-based PVR. So if you imagine most people would know a Sky is your, your you know, Sky Plus, that functionality is available today to actually pause, walk out, look at a different device, the device knows what you're on. And uh, actually that language is used somewhat similarly today with uh, the Apple uh, announcements. Is, you know, on any device, everything is always pushed automatically. So everything's always synced in the same way you look at consuming game content or typical like movie content, music content online, is no matter where you stop watching that device or pause it, you walk out, jump in the car, you can press the, press the play button and it starts over again. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the evolution you can see happening. It's a success for TV. Are you going to take what you learned from which and use it in your other products and services? So we'll say the success of our, our, our web TV is what our core product and services about IP. Mm-hmm. You know, internet protocol is delivering services over a very high quality piece of infrastructure. Uh, we've got 120 plus million investors in the country in infrastructure. Uh, so we continue to build some applications on the network. And it's really about making that network then available to other people. If there are other services people have and they want to try it over the network, then we have a network that people can go and test. And I kind of view the network almost like an app store. You know, the network is there. You know, who could build applications for the, for the network? Yeah. And 
and uh, that's where we see some of the development. You have the platform. Thanks. Yeah, the platform platform's is there. It's a bit like saying I have a smartphone, or I have a network is just a bigger version of the mm-hmm. smartphone. What else can you deliver over that platform? And uh, you can see people talking about uh, telemedicine. You know, even aging population, which is the reality, people will be staying, you know, living longer, require longer term health care. So how do you deal with that without people moving into nursing homes? So what sort of uh, technologies can you develop around home medical care? Uh, you know, self-diagnostics, using current technologies, you know, what is the app to check your cholesterol level? You know, feeding that back over a you know, high quality broadband piece. What about a device in due course that can do a scan of your hand or something? You know, so it's uh, it's all possible. Every kind of developments you see happening down the track. Not necessarily built by Magnum, but tainted by other people. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking the time to speak to me. Uh, you can find more about Magnet at www.magnetwebtv.ie. It's a fantastic service. Check it out. If you like your TV, you're going to love the service. Um, thanks, Mark, for taking the time to speak to me. Thank you. And that was a good interview. Um, as I said before, if you want to see Magnet Web TV in action, go to www.magnetwebtv.ie. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Okay? Bye.